It's Wednesday, June 16th, and this is now on h and It gives the prosecutors the heads up that something's wrong with their case because they couldn't even establish probable cause. Three Honolulu police officers are charged in the fatal shooting of a 16-year-old. An historic summit between President Biden and Russian President Putin is in the books. I'm Natalie Brand with the key issues discussed and when President Biden says we'll know if it was a success. New at noon, Governor Ige makes it official. Hawaii will now recognize Juneteenth as a holiday. That is Freedom Day. These stories plus NCIS Hawaii is about to start shooting. We're on location coming up on This Is Now. Good afternoon. Thanks for watching. This is now on this Wednesday. We got Ashley back in the H&N Digital Center. Let's get right to the day's top stories. Honolulu's prosecuting attorney announced murder charges against three police officers involved in the deadly shooting of 16-year-old I Remember Psycap. He was a robbery suspect. Casey Lund is at HPD headquarters with the latest. I believe this is the first time Honolulu's prosecuting attorney has brought charges against HPD officers in a fatal shooting incident like this. If convicted, those officers could face up to life in prison. They would at least need to serve 20 years in prison before being eligible for parole. We want to break down those charges for you this afternoon. Jeffrey Tom was charged with one count of second degree murder. He's a five year veteran of the force. Officers Zachary Ani and Christopher Fredelusis were both charged with one count of second degree attempted murder. HPD says Psycap was driving a stolen car with five others inside when he led police on a dangerous high speed chase. The group was suspected of an armed home invasion just a half hour earlier. Prosecuting attorney Steve Alm brought the charges to a grand jury that chose not to indict those officers. For perspective on this, we turn to H&N's law enforcement expert and former federal agent Tommy Ayu. This is highly unusual. It's a situation that is almost unheard of because when you take a case to the grand jury, a felony case to the grand jury, it's normally the best process for the prosecutor's office to bring forward a, a pr criminal prosecution because it's done in secret. It's done without a judge. It's done without any defense attorney present. There's no unnecessary discovery being given because the prosecutor's office does not have to disclose their evidence. And you present it to a secret grand jury, a quorum, and normally, almost always, you get a true bill to present the case. According to charging documents, Tom said Psycap rammed the stolen car into his patrol vehicle, but Tom's vehicle had only minor paint chips and scuff marks. The prosecutor said Fred Luces fired into the driver's door without confirming the shots he heard were coming from within the vehicle. This is Deputy Public Defender Jackie Esser. It's sickening. I, I, I you know, all along, um, I that what I had been shown and the evidence that I saw um, to me, it did not appear that the officers were acting out of their um, fear, their threat of life. HPD's interim chief called the charges, quote, highly unusual since the grand jury had already declined to indict the officers. Those officers are set to make their first court appearance on June 25th. At that time, a preliminary hearing will be scheduled. We believe that will happen sometime in July. We did reach out to the prosecuting attorney's office for comment on this case. They declined our request for an interview and said they're going to wait until that preliminary hearing. Reporting at HPD headquarters, I'm Casey Lund. Now back to you. We have another follow-up to pass along. Questions linger today about the other controversial police shooting in April. As we first told you yesterday, new security video shows Lindani Miani entering a home in New Uwanu. His attorney says the city tried to block the video from being released. Miani is seen following a visiting couple into the home. Miani's lawyer believes he is trying to visit a temple that is next door, but just got the wrong address. The 29-year-old eventually walks out of the home, but the female visitor staying there is on the phone with police. Officers then arrive on scene, and body camera video from HPD shows Manny attacking police before being shot. It's just obvious from the video that his purpose was an innocent and friendly one. We do believe that it was the temple because he's wearing his traditional headdress, and he is uh, removing his shoes, and he ducks his head as he goes in. The interim police chief talked to the city council yesterday, and he said officers in general respond to the scene with limited information that they are given. When they respond to any type of scene, and they 
so sometimes they get called to a scene that maybe may not have been what they expected, but they react to the individual or behavior that they're presented with. Um, so that's definitely some things to consider. And I know a picture is worth a thousand words, but are definitely things that a camera doesn't know or doesn't show. For example, it needs to be faced in the right direction. Um, it might not know things that the officer had um, known prior. So there's this new body camera footage that's been released by Big Island Police that shows a deadly shootout in Wainaku over the weekend. Sergio, he's still shooting. Hawaii County police say Ryan Santos fired at least 30 rounds from two rifles on Sunday night. An officer who has been with the department for 13 years returned fire and killed Santos. Part of the ongoing investigation is how the suspect got the guns at all since he was a convicted felon and banned from owning firearms. CBS News reports the scrambling of three F-22 Raptors at Joint Base Pearl Harbor Hickam Sunday night was a response to a Russian naval exercise about 400 miles west of the islands. Russia is staging its largest Pacific Ocean exercise since the end of the Cold War, coinciding with President Biden's meeting with Russian President Vladimir Putin in Europe. Hawaii Raptors did not enter the air defense identification zone. The military said a U.S. carrier strike group has also moved closer to Hawaii in response to Russia's exercise. President Biden held a press conference after that face-to-face -face interview with Putin in Switzerland. Natalie Brand has more. The historic summit between President Joe Biden and Russian President Vladimir Putin began with a handshake, then ended with planned separate news conferences, starting with Putin, who called the talks constructive. I think that both of these sides showed a willingness to understand one another. President Biden described the tone as positive. It is clearly not in anybody's interest, your countries or mine, for us to be in a situation where we're in a new Cold War. Inside an 18th century villa in Geneva, the two leaders sat down with their top diplomats, followed by expanded talks with additional aides. Afterwards, both sides agreed to return their ambassadors to their posts in each other's countries in the future and to restart dialogue on nuclear arms and weapon systems. Heading into this summit, the White House tempered expectations, but said the goal was to talk about areas of possible cooperation and also clearly lay out the red lines. Issue number one, a series of cyber attacks on U.S. entities blamed on Russian actors. I talked about the proposition that certain critical infrastructure should be off limits to attack, period. Also human rights, including the imprisonment of Putin's political opponent, Alexei Navalny. What do you say would happen if opposition leader Alexei Navalny dies? I made it clear to him that I believe the, the consequences of that would be devastating for Russia. The summit was slightly shorter than expected. President Biden says the test of whether it was a success will be revealed in the coming months. Natalie Brand, CBS News, the White House. Now to the latest coronavirus numbers here at home. The state health department is reporting 30 new infections today and one new fatality. The breakdown by island shows two cases on the Big Island, one on Kauai, two on Maui, 22 on Oahu, one out of state and three cases are probable. Kauai County is independently reporting two new infections. Meanwhile, we just got new details about Hawaii's vaccine incentive program. Here's Hilton Rathel from the Healthcare Association of Hawaii. Although it is still early in the campaign, the first week's data shows our vaccination numbers have increased since the campaign launched. Between June 8 and yesterday, June 15, our weekly vaccination number increased by more than 21%. This is an additional 7,000 plus people compared to the week before. Uh, and this does uh, designate um, June 15th. Uh, in recognition of the Emancipation Day. Just in at noon, Governor Ige signed a bill today to recognize Juneteenth as an official state day of remembrance. So this comes just one day after the U.S. Senate passed a bill to make June 19th a federal holiday. When I was growing up, I went to Thomas Jefferson Elementary School um, in Waikiki. We grew up on the Alawai. And I remember in elementary school, someone asking me, if I was the N-word. They weren't calling me it, 
They were curious. They were another kid. They had obviously heard it somewhere, but they didn't know what it was. Today, Hawaii became the 49th state to commemorate the 19th of June as the day that officially ended slavery in America. But Juneteenth, June 19th, is the day that everyone was free. That is Freedom Day. And I think freedom is something to celebrate anytime. Two years after President Abraham Lincoln issued the Emancipation Proclamation, a Union Army Major General rode into Galveston, Texas, and announced that all the slaves were free. I'm so honored. It's so hard for me to speak on this. The founder of Hawaii Juneteenth said she felt embarrassed representing a state that didn't officially recognize the significance of June 19th. Well, African Americans only make up about 3% of the population in Hawaii, so a lot of people feel like racism is a mainland issue. And I obviously disagree. Racism is not as prevalent in Hawaii as it is in some other states in the mainland, but it does exist and it is something that needs to be acknowledged and addressed. And by recognizing Juneteenth, I think we're taking a small step towards ending racial disparity here in Hawaii. Although it's not an official federal holiday yet, a bill is making its way through Congress, and it would still need to be signed by President Joe Biden to become law. This shift in the national conversation comes after the Black Lives Matter movement gained momentum in recent years. You know, I, I really believe that if we teach our younger generations an accurate telling of U.S. history, if we give them the information on our past, it can help them understand our present and change our future. We can't expect people to help battle and break down systemic racism if we don't allow them to understand where it comes from or why it exists. As a performing arts educator, Jonathan Seipart begins his school year asking students what's most important to them, creating art that tackles issues on race and identity. He hopes that through arts and humanities, he can inspire a more passionate community. I'm, I'm such a fan of not not revisiting history to um, to beat a dead horse, like some people might think, or revisiting history to um, to have a point and and to say why uh, another person or another group of people might be, you know, uh, they, sh they should feel bad for what happened in the past. What's important is that this is this is collective knowledge, right? We have the benefit of not having to rely on simply oral histories anymore. We can document them. We, we, can, we can all come together and celebrate that as a people, as people, not one group of people, as people, we've learned something from the past and that should carry us forward. And just so you know, there's all sorts of events planned for this weekend's holiday celebration. We're writing up that information for our h and digital platforms. We'll have it posted there shortly after the show. And a big thanks to our intern, Lauren, for putting together that piece. Now let's get to some very, very exciting entertainment news, right, Ash? That's right. NCIS Hawaii begins filming today, and our Billy V is on location on the North Shore with a preview of today's blessing and the production events. What's going on out there, Billy? Thank you very much, Jonathan. Ashley, we're here at an undisclosed location on the North Shore of Oahu, as you mentioned. Filming starts today, but the blessing will come first. We're located at Base Camp North Shore. So you see the parking signs and you see the tents out behind me. I'll kind of get out of the way here. Uh, we can tell you that, of course, uh, the cast list, the main cast, Vanessa Lachey plays Jane Tennant, the main character. She's the first female to lead an e NCIS team. Of course, NCIS is the world's number one television series right now. Yasmin Albustami plays Lucy. Jason Antoon plays the techie guy, the one who's the, the intelligence. Noah Mills is also in the cast. Tori Anderson is there. Uh, and Kian Tellen is uh, Alex Tennant. That would be Jane's son. And then there's also a Hawaii edition as well. Mahina Napoleon, who comes from Hawaii. She will play nine-year-old Jane's daughter. So those are the cast members. Now it's unknown who's gonna be on this first day of filming. And of course, we can't tell you where that filming location is, but we can tell you it's here on the North Shore. So what they do is they set up all the equipment, all the personnel here, they get shuttled to the remote location where they're filming, and then they come back to here. So that's why this is called uh, Base Camp. So 
things are secretive, I can also tell you the bubble begins from the moment you step out of your car because we had to make sure that we had masks on even before we got close to base camp. And my cameraman and I had to be tested per CBS before we even come close to base camp. We did that uh, two days ago. From the north shore of Oahu, from base camp NCIS Hawaii North Shore, I'm Billy V for This Is Now. Jonathan, Ashley, we'll get it back to you. Billy V always gets the fun assignments. I Thank know. you so much, Billy. Yep. <laughs> Looking forward to that show, oh, too. Yeah. Looks huge. Oh, yeah. And it's really cool to see the entertainment industry coming back to life, mm -hmm. all those productions coming back. All right, guys, let's switch gears here just a bit. Let's get a check of your weather. Here's Guy Hoggy. Aloha on this Wednesday, there's a little clump of moisture, an old front that's kind of uh, sending us some uh, scattered showers, mainly for Kauai and Oahu. You can see them there, but they're passing in nature and they're light. Although for Kauai, there's a chance for a thunderstorm on Kauai, while the rest of us sees basically normal trade wind weather. And those trade winds will be picking up speed throughout the day. From Maui to Kauai, they'll be running about 15 to 20. Of course, much lighter over in Kona, where they will get some afternoon clouds and showers and higher humidity levels. Otherwise, typical trade wind weather. Again, a few more showers for Kauai and Oahu's windward sides. Lots of leeward sunshine today. High temperatures running into the middle 80s. Not a whole lot of surf to speak of. Biggest waves rolling into the east shore, but it's choppy there. But heads up, a solid swell is due into the south shore starting tomorrow, peaking over the weekend. Over the weekend, we could get some high surf advisory level waves. So again, a few scattered showers for Kauai and Oahu today. Breezy trade -ins. The trade should back off as we head into the weekend. Keep it here on Hawaii News Now. We'll have all your severe weather updates. So joining us now is Kelly Cho from Goodwill. And Kelly, tell us what has been so unique about the pandemic in your organization? I know you guys were dealing with some specific issues there with donation sites, right? Yeah. So um, we always try and encourage people to, as much as possible, drop off their donations um, only when our donation centers are actually open and we have staff there that can actually receive it and give you a donation receipt. Because when you drop it off after hours, um, you know, it just tends to pile up and it just creates kind of an issue where, you know, it, it doesn't look clean. It makes their neighborhoods um, not look as as nice and you know people can go through it and and sometimes and especially when it rains um, or there's other like uh, weather issues you know then the items could potentially become trash so as much as possible please try to drop off your donations um, during our hours of operation normally our donation centers are open from 9 to 5 p.m every day yeah. All right. I also know in the pandemic, a lot of folks are cleaning out their houses because they have some extra time on their hands looking for a home project. And so you guys are teaming up with someone new to make even more donation sites available, right? Yes. Um, we're very excited um, because we've recently partnered up with the YMCA of Honolulu, as well as Big Brothers and Big Sisters of Hawaii. Um, and we've opened uh, seven new donation centers um, statewide. And what that's allowed us to do is, you know, just be able to um, make donating to Goodwill um, and supporting our organizations a lot more convenient for a lot more people. So we have um, a few more donation centers on Oahu, got Mililani, Kalihi, Nu'uwanu, um, the YMCA is there. And then also the Big Brothers, Big Sisters um, and Goodwill Hawaii pod in Aiea. And then we have two other pods um, we just opened on Maui as well. <laughs> All right, standing in the checkout line is so 2020, at least that's what Amazon is saying. You guys, you gotta check this out. This is new technology they're rolling out. It's calling Just Walk Out Technology. Great name, I guess. That's when customers who are finished shopping can simply walk out of the building and there's this app that charges the bill automatically and sends it to the customer. I think this is a great idea. Yeah. According to Amazon's website, there are 22 of its Go locations in the U.S. right now and an Amazon Go grocery store in Seattle. Officials say this option will allow people to minimize their interactions with store employees. I think that's very good when you're talking the pandemic, but hey, there's certain checkout people, specifically this, there's this woman and a young man at the Safeway on Polly uh -huh. that I will miss checking oh, out yeah. too, if I, checking out with if I didn't get to. And I'm sure that'll make me buy a lot more. 
Yeah, that's because right. Because you don't know actually how much no you're buying going to have shame. Right? I know. <laughs> Well, you guys, Father's Day is coming up. It's this Sunday, and a new report indicates it could be a record in terms of how much people spend on gifts and other items for dad. Now, the National Retail Federation is predicting consumers will shell out upwards of $20 billion. That would be the most Father's Day spending on record, more than last year's $17 billion. Now, the National Retail Federation also says those surveyed are planning to spend an average of $174 on Father's Day gifts. Woo. Yeah. All right. And June 21st, next Monday, is Make Music Day. It's an international music celebration. And here at home, the local chapter is planning something really cool, and they're looking for local musicians and venues to participate. Here's award-winning musician and one of the founders of Naleo Pilimihana, Nalani Jenkins, with more on Make Music Hawaii. Every year on June 21st, in over a thousand cities around the world, people celebrate music by making music. And so Hawaii has joined in as a chapter. Last year during COVID, we couldn't do anything live. So we did some uh, pre-recorded video song swaps with composers and it was super fun. And this year is our first year to like get out there and actually have a live make music day. I'm super stoked. We have like 40, Eight musicians, I believe, and 24 venues. Um, they're all on Oahu. I, I would love to have some neighbor island venues join us as well and musicians because there's so much talent all over the state. So the way they would do that would be check out our site, makemusichawaii.org, and then there's a portal on there. I equate it to like match.com. They can go in there. If they're a participant, they can put their uh, bio in, all their social media information, and um, tell us what kind of music they do. And then if you're a venue, same thing, you put in your information and the two of them can actually see each other through the portal and they can match make and create their own events. All the events for Make Music are live for the public. And are you looking for, you know, the amateurs to the super professionals or like what, who are you looking for? Yeah, you know, Make Music is all about, uh, globally, it's all about celebrating all kinds of music with all types of people and all levels of, you know, professional to just beginning. So um, on our website, we translated that into all kind of people, all kind of places, all kind of music. So sky's the limit. And with the creativity here, um, I'm sure we're going to see some really interesting things. Uh, we were able to curate a few events. We have an event at the Bishop Museum that is our signature event. And it's gonna um, feature some great Hawaii talent. We're gonna have the Royal Hawaiian Band back. We have a children's chorus. We have Bobby Madero from Mauna Lua. We also have me jumping in on a set with uh, the legendary Makaha Sons um, and Kupu uh, Deliri Na'awao and his band kind of closing it out. It's a wonderful day of music. You're gonna see these kind of things happening all over the island of Oahu. For people that want to check it out, that they're looking for live music, again, everything is free. A couple things they can do. One is go follow us at Make Music Hawaii, either on Instagram or Facebook, so that you'll see our notifications because there's gonna be some very cool live streams going on out there. And then also, if they go to our website at makemusichawaii.org, there is a link they click. So there's a site map, like a Google map, and they can go in there and see all the pins of places where they can go and enjoy uh, live free music on June 21st. So we invite them all to come out and join us. Yeah, so you neighbor island musicians, check out that website because we want this to be like a really cool statewide event. And I know it says it's open to everyone, but I know that does not include me, right? You're, you're amateur, John, you can do it. Uh, all right, all right, sorry guys. <laughs> you guys, that's it for This Is Now. We'll see you tomorrow, bye-bye.